So we're gonna start with the herbal medicine for immunity. That's the one with the picture of, maybe someone could tell me what the picture is on the front there. <laughs> What's in this plant? Echinacea. Echinacea, Echinacea, right. Yeah, so we're gonna be talking today, Is uh, that's our real, real focus. Today is Echinacea from the herbal perspective. Um, and hey, could you help me for a second? Could you put up uh, this one? Thank you. Um, and so we're gonna be focusing on these herbs today um, and we're gonna go out to the garden we're gonna meet some of the plants because that's really the connection that I want you so here's some goals for our workshop today one you're gonna learn about things to help with immunity ding <laughs> two you're gonna begin to develop a relationship with the plants which is really how you get to use them. Like it's, you know, like your best friend, right? You're like, hi, nice to meet you, Echinacea. What can you help me with? You know, so you want to develop that relationship. And that's what today is about. I would love you to remember two things about each thing we're going to talk about today. You know, maybe on your little sheet, you're like, okay, Echinacea, it's good for do do, right? So when you tell your friend later tonight, when you go home over a glass of wine or a nice hot cup of tea, you say, I learned this about this plant. Right, so that way you can start to develop the relationship. So these are the main ones we're gonna, in stars, we're gonna be talking about Echinacea, following set, elderberry, and calendula. We're also gonna be talking about some mushrooms, which are part of our herbal medicine community. And then we're in, there's a lot more. So when it comes to plant medicine, which we're gonna go kind of like backtrack and talk about what plant medicine is first, but I want you to know that one, like if there are plants, they have many different properties. So when you say like, you know, echinacea for immunity. It does that, but it does so much more. It's not just like one thing, but they have like the highlight. You could say it's like the super, their super uh, power, right? And that's how we remember the plant. But when we're talking about using it for medicine, we can use them in a whole bunch of different ways because they have more than one use. So that's why I put like some extras because these are just like, you know, they're bonus plants, <laughs> so to speak. So if you turn to, let's open up our uh, herbal medicine handout and there's a little thing all about me so uh, let me talk a little bit about me first so you can get to know me um, so again I'm Dr. Lulu I'm a naturopathic physician and I've been working here at the farm since 2015 right Melissa 2015 sure. <laughs> yeah so it's like you know, Melissa introduced me to the farm and um, I love working with plants and when I first met John Mashey, the um, owner of the farm, I was so excited to have, share my vision with him and he like said, yes, let's do it. Let's create an herbal garden to help the veterans learn about herbal medicine. It's like, oh my God, you know, it was one of my dreams come true. So um, we have slowly started creating, it started out with these small two rings, which you'll see. And now we have this massive herbal garden and we're using, making medicine, teaching the vets how to use medicine. We have a community clinic where I'm seeing the veterans using that medicine that we make. So it's really become this amazing dream that has come to fruition. So I'm excited today to be here today and to share with you my passion and my love and help you learn about herbal medicine. So you can read more. I also have a podcast, <laughs> The Genetic Genius. So if you're interested in learning about um, different things about alternative medicine, like say you're, you you know, wanna learn about your thyroid or you wanna learn about gut issues, anything like that, I have a great podcast where I interview people from all over the world that talk about alternative health. So that's really fun. Um, so let's talk about plant medicine. So plant medicine, it's been around for so long, right? I mean, we probably the, the cave people, when they learned about plants, they were probably started using them in ways to help their family, right? So this is a medicine that has been used for thousands and thousands of years all around the planet, but it's kind of gotten lost along the way, right? Like other things came in, we had, um, traditional allopathic medicine come in. And so herbal medicine has kind of got lost in the shuffle, but now it's having this resurgence where we're learning like, well, we need to have better ways or not better ways is not the right word. We need to have additional ways to support the body in a way that we are um, helping the community, teaching our friends and family how to do things to help on us on a daily basis to have optimal health, right? Which is great. Um, and so plant medicine has this long history of not only helping us, but also creating community, which is one of the reasons why we have it here at the farm. Because when you have something that you can help your friend with and your family, it helps everyone feel better, right? So how does bot botanical medicine work or plant medicine? It has a lot of a different uh, words you might hear me speak about today. But plant medicine, so a plant, 
And then I have up here in the front, these are some specific plants we're gonna be talking about today. So echinacea, which is what I mentioned we're gonna be learning a lot about, a plant has a constituent. It has a specific property where you could basically say it's going into the body and turning on a switch, right? It's like turning the light on and saying, oh yeah, okay, this is the job that I need to do for you today. I need to turn on the light. I need to activate your immune system. I need to stimulate your immune system. So that's kind of how a plant works. It has a specific constituent or multiple actually. And if you're thinking about a fragrance, so many like, you know, thyme is the one we're gonna talk about. Thyme then has a fragrance, an aroma, an essential oil quality. And we can absorb that through different things, internally, topically, through our limbic system, through our nasal passages. So plant medicine has so many different aspects that we can use it, which is one of the other reasons that I love it. It's not just like one thing, right? We can take it as a dried form. We can take it as a tincture. We can take it as a tea. We can use it in our environment for aromatherapy. I mean, they're like, it's amazing and endless, the possibilities. So when we have plant medicine around us, just the energetics and the vibration of the plant then helps us. You know, like you probably will see, or if you haven't been out to our garden already, when you're in the garden, even just our vegetables and fruits, it has this healing quality, right? And so it, the, that actual plant is communicating with the other plants around it and also creating this like, you know, energetic symbiotic relationship when we're with a, like, a sense of peace and calmness comes over us because, you know, they, have, they give us things to breathe and they're communicating about how they can help us. So plants are super exciting. Um, then let's talk about how we can use plant medicine. So there's lots, of, I just mentioned a bunch of them. So we, one of the easiest ways to use plant medicine is in a tea. And we're gonna be making teas today. And we're gonna be talking about dried form of plants, what the plan is, how to make it into a dried form. You're gonna all learn how to make your own tea today. So um, the tea I think is the easiest. It's really, you know, great to make. You can just, if you're growing some herbs on your patio, you know, it's, you can pick them and dry them and make your own tea. I mean, that's like easy as making lasagna, right? So <laughs> it can be really simple in that way. So tea, number one. Number two, um, we can then take that tea and we can do things with it. So one, we make an infusion. So an infusion is where we take that dried medicine or you can also use fresh plant matter and you put it in hot water and you make a tea. And that's usually for leaf and we do it for like a shorter amount of time. Then we can make a de decoction. So decoction is when we have the hard plant matter like a root. And you can think like when, whenever we're doing herbal medicine, we're taking out the medicine from the plant matter, right? And so when we have a de decoction, we have to decoct it longer because we're pulling the plant matter. So it's for stuff that's really hard, like a root. Um, and we're not gonna be doing, um, I don't think we're gonna be doing any roots today. We're just gonna be doing fresh plant medicine from the leaf or flower. But <clears throat> we do use the root a lot and echinacea, which I'm gonna talk about is one of the plants we use the root for. We use the flower and the cone and the root, but we always harvest root in the fall because we want the, you know, the plant to go through its whole season. And then it has come, sometimes we'll do it in the spring, but most of the time it's in the fall. The plant has grown through the whole season and got, you know, made this amazing root. And then we harvest that and we use the root. So those are the two ways we use teas, infusion and decoction. And then we also make tincture. So we're gonna learn how to make a tincture today. And um, I put all of the information on how to make a tincture. So we're gonna go through that. And then also we're going to learn how to make a glycerite. So for those of you that, um, tinctures are made with alcohol. So <laughs> some of you guys already saw the Everclear on your little station here. So um, Everclear is just an easy, you can use different forms of alcohol, but you wanna use something that's really clean and clear that doesn't have a lot of flavor, right? Because you wanna, you don't, you don't wanna use like tequila. Because you know, it's like got that, you know, that tequila flavor. But Everclear, hence the word clear, it has hardly any flavor. And then it will extract the medicine in a great way. You can also use, a lot of uh, herbalists will use um, brandy. So that's one that you can use and uh, people like that. It has a, it's not as, it has a little flavor, but it's a good extractor. But, um, or vodka, you can also use vodka. So those are like the three that are mainly used. I like Everclear, it's cheap. <laughs> and, it, um, and it also extracts the medicine really well, easily to get. And I always recommend getting it in the glass bottle. Of course, you know, we wanna limit our plastic consumption on the planet as much as possible, but also because um, it is alcohol, it's, its job is to extract 
we don't want it to be extracting plastic then into our medicine, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna be talking about for tinctures. And tinctures then, we take the alcohol, we take the plant medicine, we combine them together, and we let them sit for a long period of time. So here is, I'll pass this around. This is an echinacea tincture that we made on <laughs> June 25th. So you can see that it, the echinacea is fully in here. This is what you're gonna be making today. And it has been extracting the medicine. So that's a tincture. And then the a glycerite then uses glycerin, which we're gonna be using today. Um, and it uses glycerin and water and it extracts the medicine in a different way because it's a different form. So we use different things to extract the medicine. Um, and I'll pass this one around on this side. So a tincture is the strongest form that we can take as medicine and make as medicine when it comes to herbal medicine. So if you're a little caveat there, there's two kind of a couple things. One, if you're not doing any alcohol, no worries. We're going to make the glycerite. So we'll be, you know, when I, I ask you in a little while what you want to make, Renee is going to help us to pass different things out. So um, the other one is sometimes you want to, you do want to use caution if you have, um, like if you're elderly or you giving some medicine to a, someone that's geriatric, you want to be cautious about using the alcohol. And three is with children, right? So those are the reasons that a glycerite might be more um, up your alley and it, really easy to use. And glycer glycerin, so some of the sources for uh, glycerin, um, I, I'll write it, write it down in a few minutes. Um, so Star West Botanicals is a company that we get our glycerin from. You can get it in the gallon form or even smaller and that's a great resource. So that's a really easy one for you. And I'll write these resources down for you uh, so you'll be able to get them on the break. So Star West Botanicals is a great one. You want to make sure that you're using organic. So I recommend, you know, anything. <laughs> you can get organic alcohol. This is true. But we, we're just, we try to buy it by the case. It's a little bit cheaper for us at the farm to get it this way. But you, the more that you can use organic in your medicine, the better. So tincture is strongest. A glycerin, which we're going to make, they, it, a glycerin still has a large um, available or is really good at taking the medicine out of the dry, the fresh or dried plant matter. It's not quite as strong, right? And so if you're wanting to give them to children, like I mentioned, it's great. They, glycerin also tastes better, right? It's sweeter. They like it better. Um, a lot of times I'll make a combination when I'm making formulas for patients in combining both together because then it makes it taste a little sweeter. It's still got the strong medicine. Also, you can, if you want to use a tincture, say you're going to, you want to use some echinacea and you're going to take it yourself and you're like, I don't really want that alcohol. You can put it in a little hot water and the alcohol will evaporate. That's a great one to do. So I recommend that with patients. You can just, you know, um, you're still going to have that medicine because you're going to drink it, but then the alcohol will evaporate. Um, so that's a really good one. Okay. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to cut off the stem of your echinacea flower and then you're going to, you have a little workstation in front of you um, and a little jar. So you're, I'm going to borrow this for a moment. Um, you're going to fill this little jar, <laughs> okay, <laughs> with your echinacea, just like um, this. <laughs> okay, this is our goal to make this. So you can either put it in whole or you can cut it um, and you would just, you know, start to trim off the, the petals and then get in there and break the cone. Try to kind of like trim, this is not the best scissors, but um, trim off the cone or if you can't cut the cone, then you can put the whole cone in there. Um, but how that would work, and I'm going to use your jar, but I'll take it back. So you would just stuff it in there. <laughs> you don't need to wash them. No, you don't need to wash them. Um, so yeah, if you can't cut them, do your best. Um, what, okay, so let's talk about, there was just a question about, do you need to wash them? If you're doing wild harvesting or if they're really dirty, yes, wash them. Um, Did you say cut them? Yeah, you, yeah, you can just tear off the petals um, or cut the petals off. You know, you can just tear them off if you want. Um, these are great for drying and using for medicine. We use those. And then you want to cut the cone as best as you can. Um, if not, just stuff it in there. <laughs> or you don't have to take the petals off either. Um, but see, so it'll just, the seed, the cone part, just, you can just do it with your hands. It'll just come off just like that. You're really easy to break apart. If you um, smell the cone, 
is very strong. Can you smell that kind of like bittery aroma? It's kind of like almost like spicy a little bit. So when you taste echinacea, because of it, one of its constituents, it will numb your tongue. Yes. Okay, and so the, it's a very, it's very strong in that way. So I always recommend when you're taking tinctures to add them to water, <laughs> because if you don't add it to water, it's, it can be very strong for your mouth, right, and your system. So adding to water and taking them, but also when it comes to echinacea, it can make you vomit, right? Okay, and it's very very strong. So um, yeah, I'm not just saying that just because it tastes good, but also like your body goes like, oh, that's that you know that was really intense for me, and uh, too much. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about echinacea. And then Renee's gonna pass around and help you with the Everclear, which is on your station, and or glycerite. Does anybody particularly want to make a glycerite? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna make two because we're going to the same house. She's okay. Gonna make, uh, Great. One thing, and then we're gonna make another. So with the Everclear, I mean, sorry, with the glycerite, it's gonna be two thirds glycerin and one third water okay mm -hmm. so you know or 75 25 something around there so you want to you're going to put in your um glycerin and then you're going to put in the water that renee is going to pass around to okay so you can do either one of those things so i'll put one going this way if you want to do the glycerin and you can also mix up the kind of the glycerin separately and then add it in um so you want to do that here's some containers And the, the little thing in front of you is a four ounce container, just to kind of let you know what you're dealing with there. She's pretty full of <laughs> stuff. Stuff already. Yeah, so you might not be able to fit, like four might not fit in there. I was just kind of gauging, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tight. Yeah, so. <laughs> When you're making herbal medicine, what I always tell people is to make the jar like a fairy was going to take a nap. And you want it to be like, you know, light and fairy and airy, right? Because the medicine, the alcohol and the glycerin has to, you know, flow through around the space. If it's too tight, it will be too packed, okay? So you might not use all four. You might not use all four. Take them home with you. Like I said, I want you to take the stuff home with you today. You can put them in your bag or whatever you like. Okay, so let's, I'm going to talk about the echinacea as you are making your medicine. So again, echinacea has a long reputation of helping with the immune system, and it's used for colds and flus, right? You can use it for both. Um, you'll see when you work through your workbook, as we're working today, that I put the common name of the plant, Echinacea. Then you have the Latin name, which I mentioned in the garden, which is important to know. Echinacea SPP. What does that mean? That means species. That means that we use a lot of different species with that have the Echinacea in combination. We use, um, we use Angustifolia, Purpura, and so we use different ones. So here at the garden, we're growing mainly Purpura. There is an Echinacea, an ornamental one. You'll see it has like orange and yellow flowers. That's not the variety. So that's what I'm saying is important to know. Um, so you also see a therapeutic action. So that's going to be the main actions that the plant does. So for echinacea, it's immunomodulating. Remember I mentioned that when that volume is up too high, it helps to turn down. So it is immune modulating. It's also an immune stimulant. It's an, an inflammatory modulator. We actually use it a lot with inflammatory uh, formulas and in inflammatory conditions. It's antimicrobial wonderful for everything that we have going on right now antimicrobial antiviral it's a vulnerary and an anodyne anodyne means that it helps with the um uh pain anodyne means an anti anti-pain in the back of your handout there's a list a glossary of all the terms so if you're like what was that what does that mean you go back and look in the back i put all the terms because there are lots of different terms that we use for herbs so an anodyne now then you'll see a section where it has the medicinal use. So that you can see with echinacea, there is a massive list, and I'm on page 12. Um, there's a massive list of the things that echinacea can be used for. Influenza and 
URIs, upper, upper respiratory infections. That's one of its claim to fame, right? Anytime you have, and when it comes to an immune stimulant, when do you wanna take it, right? You wanna take it as soon as you start feeling ill. You know, when you're like, oh, I don't really feel that great. I feel like something's coming on, right? You feel maybe a little tired, a little headachey, maybe you feel like a little tickle in your throat. Immediately, that's when you go to echinacea. Boom, right on. And when people always say, well, how long should you use an immune, immune stimulant or how long should I use echinacea? So you wanna take a break. You can think about like if we're turning up the volume on our radio to 12, you would you know, blow out your eardrums, right? So you wanna turn it up, take a break. May, you know, say you had an upper respiratory infection for like a week. Maybe you wanna take it for two weeks and then take a break. You know, right now as people are working with COVID, what I usually recommend is take, you know, take something for a couple weeks, take a break. Take something for a couple weeks, take a break. Rotate your immune stimulants. How long, <laughs> yeah, how long is the break? So I would take a break for at least one to two weeks, right? Allow your body to um, reboot, right? Because what we're doing with the immune stimulant is we are working on the cells of our, our white blood cells we're stimulating the body to then turn on the volume to make more white blood cells to do its job. So if we're doing that for too long, it's, it, puts us, it does not help our body to learn to do things on its own, right? So we wanna turn up the volume, take a break, and then maybe try some of the other plants that we're gonna talk about, right? Or make, you know, mix them up. It's the same when you're, if you were gonna eat oatmeal every day for the rest of your life, it'd be boring, right? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, some people like that. My stepdad's from the military and he loves to eat the same thing every day. So that, I, you know, <laughs> that could totally be you. But for me, I like to have variety and your body likes to have variety. Studies have been done that show that we eat the same 30 foods all the time. And that's how we develop food sensitivities is because we wanna mix it up. So mix up your herbs, try something new. You did echinacea, maybe you're gonna add in some um, of the herbal mushrooms, or maybe you're gonna try some astragalus, or maybe you're gonna try doing more elderberry, whatever it is, you know? So that's what my recommendation for that is. So medicinal uses, we can use it for pharyngitis and tonsillitis as a gargle. Remember I mentioned that numbing effect? So you don't wanna swallow that. <laughs> you wanna gargle and then spit it up. You can mix it with a little um, water for that gargle. That will be helpful. Um, it's good topically for staph infections. So MRSA, skin wounds, skin ulcers, you can use it in a salve. We're not gonna be making salves today, but that's a great one. You can um, uh, do a infusion on the stove, making it as an oil, or you could do, there's like you can see over there on the side, there's a herb that's solar infusing. You could do that. And then you would strain it and then use it as a salve with some beeswax or something, or just use it straight as an oil, okay? Um, it's good for uh, mycobacterial infections. It's also good for cancer, uh, HIV and AIDS. It's good for pertussis or whooping cough. It's good for periodontal disease. You can see because of that like high immune quality, you could use it again as a swish and then spitting it out. Um, it's good for vaginal uh, candida. It's good for um, endometriosis for women. It's good for mastitis. So topically for um, after infection on the breast, after breastfeeding. So it's good for any type of infection. You can see like the list could probably go like three pages of its uses, but you can see how wonderful an herb it is, how easy it is to grow, how easy it is to harvest and then make something. I mean, you can see just what we did in those steps there. And the echinacea will grow very quickly in your own environment. And so it's an easy one to have. Um, what, if you're gonna remember two things about echinacea today, what would those be? Use the cone. Use the cone, <laughs> number one, use the cone. <laughs> or immune, numbing. Yeah, immune and numbing, right? So it, as we are working into the uh, winter season coming up and moving into fall, I can't believe it's coming up soon, but it will be. You know, this is the time to make your medicine. You wanna think about like the six months ahead. Like, okay, I'm gonna be working into winter. What do I need to make now to get me through the season? What can I make for my family and community? Make some echinacea tincture. Like, you know, this could, this could last everybody in your household for like three years, you know, like, you know, so you can make stuff and then share it with your friends and family. So think about that now, you know, and harvest some today and then make it on your own. Is yes. There, is there a shelf life after? After, so tinctures. Okay, so let's say this is, um, you have all made your little tincture now. Did you, did you make it? No, I don't, I don't have, have it. Don't have the uh, alcohol. Oh, it's coming around, I think. Um, okay, so you've made, you're made or making your medicine. 
Um, then you want to let it sit in the alcohol for a minimum of four weeks. Four weeks. Yes, so that's like the where, you know, okay, it's extracted a minimum of four weeks. But you can let it sit in alcohol for a long time. You could let, I mean, the herb could hang out in here for a long time. You could strain it like after a year. Like it's like, you know, it's not going to, it will make it stronger and it's not going to make it go bad. Um, for a glycerite, for the glycerin, you want to make sure that you strain it. At, I always strain them like with four to six weeks because they have a much, much shorter shelf life. Um, and so you're going to make the glycerin and you always want to uh, put the name of what you made, put the date and what it is right on your label. And then you want to keep a, you know, if you know on your shelf, maybe put them in order or something, what you need to strain first. Once you, um, so the question from Tamara was, what do you, um, how long will it last for? Okay, so say you've made this tincture and now you've strained it and now you have the, the end result. You know, like people say they can last an eternity, but I usually don't use it after four years. And that's like kind of like my like, okay, like four years. From, from the dried herbal perspective, I get rid of them after a year. I'm like, you know, it's like, it's, it's dried. It's been, you know, aromatizing, releasing things. If you did it in a vacuum sealed thing, it would probably last a little longer, but dried herb year, uh, tincture four years. If you don't use it in that time, uh, glycerin, you want to keep it. Um, if you keep it in the refrigerator after you strain it, then a year, that's it that's for it. glycerin. Yeah. Do you have to put it in the fridge? It's better, especially right now. So you want to keep all of your tinctures in a dark, cool place, and glycerins are best in the fridge. Um, and you know, if you have a, like a nice, cool basement or something, you know, your herbal dispensary, that's fine. But um, and right now, it's really hot, so they do not like to be hot. The, it, the glycerin will go bad. So um, you definitely want to make sure that you're um, keeping it. You can combine them. Like I said, if you're gonna do a tincture and a glycerin, like once you've made the two things, like in your bag, we made the immune booster that's in your bag um, from the farm, from um, our echinacea here. We combine the two together. So it's got a more stable shelf, li stable shelf life because it has the glycerin and tincture mixed together. You'll use that, like, you know, you'll use it. You won't last like four years probably. But um, it, when you add the two together, you're adding alcohol and then glycerin together. So it extends the shelf life. Does that, does it make sense, everybody? Okay. Um, on each of your herbal and for the aromatherapy um, items, you'll see that I added a dosage. So if you're wondering like, okay, how much do I take of this thing? How do I take it? How much do I take? So um, I put an acute dosage. So again, acute is when you feel that coming on. Um, a cold, yeah, flu coming on. A chronic. So that's gonna be if you have a, like say you had, you know, some people will say, oh my gosh, I've had this like cold for like a month. Well, one, you probably want to check in with your PCP or check in with me or whatever your, you know, practitioner on staff and say, hey, I can't quite kick this and check it out. But also you can be using it um, for longer term. But as I mentioned, you want to take the break, right? So using it, you maybe use it for three weeks. You're like, I still have this cold. I'm going to take a break, go and go see someone, find out what's going on. Maybe I need more help, right? Maybe I need to do a detox or whatever it is. Um, are you guys okay over there? We don't have a lid. Oh, I, it's because I stole it. Oh. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Okay, um, then I also put a tea dose, okay? So remember I talked about tea in the beginning. And I uh, hear five to 10 grams um, for 250 milliliters of water. You can also do, you know, grams. You'll see the reason that we use grams for measuring is because uh, universally around the world, we don't use the same measurements. <laughs> so you'll see that a lot. Uh, we'll use um, milliliters and grams. So that way when you're reading an herbal book um, that is from another country or you're reading mine, you'll see that it's in the universal measurements. So that way you're like, oh, okay, yeah, five to 10 grams. If you don't know what that is, just Google it, right? You know, Google knows, every well, not everything. Google knows a lot about measurements. <laughs> okay, so I put the tea doses there. Also, a cream and an ointment. I mentioned it's super great for wound healing. So uh, that's a uh, the one of the classes we have coming up in um, 
Yeah, August 28th is the first aid class. So I'll be taught, we'll be making salves that class. So that's gonna be super fun. Um, and because we wanna be making our own first aid kit so that when we have like a bug bite or a wound or whatever it is, we know what to do. We have our own toolkit. And you know, if you have an emergency, then you go 911, but we wanna be able to use our herbal kit when it's our own emergency that we can handle on ourselves or on our own or our family. Um, so adverse reactions and contraindications. All herbs you want to check to make sure first is there something I need to be aware of. Almost every single herb is contraindicated for pregnancy. It's that's just the way it is. There is some that we can use, but I would just, you know, just putting it out there, just don't use them if you're pregnant or recommend them unless you have checked very specifically for the herb. Because we don't want to disturb, you know, that time period of the embryo is very delicate. Right? We don't want to disturb that environment. Um, adverse effects, excess salivation. So I mentioned that taste, <laughs> that will cause you to drool. <laughs> um, and rash, so sometimes topically it can be, it's a very intense herb, it can cause a rash. So you want to just be cautious of that. Um, and contraindicated for other immune suppressive drugs. So I mentioned cancer earlier. I do want to say that um, I, if I'm working with a patient with cancer, I always work with the oncology team. If you are, you know, know someone or um, you yourself has cancer, you always want to make sure you're checking with that oncology team and being really aware of what you can use and not use. It's very particular, especially if you're on chemo or radiation. We don't want to disturb an environment that is being for a specific purpose. Right? So then when we're not doing that, then we can really help the body to come back to its normal state. Um, autoimmune disease, so that's theoretical. Um, there's some people say, like I mentioned, some people have specific things about herbs, you know, there's different rules of thought. So because it's an immunostimulant and an immune modulator, it's both, we can use it in both ways. But some people will say with the autoimmune disease that it can stimulate the immune system too much. So if you're gonna use it with the autoimmune disease, I just recommend taking further or longer breaks and less use. Does that make sense? So like take it for a week, maybe take two weeks off. See how your body responds if, you're, uh, if you have more exasperated autoimmune symptoms or uh, things like that, then maybe take a longer break, okay? All right, um, the next page on 14 is all about um, the herbal tea. We're gonna come back to this tea, we're gonna make it, but I wanna kinda go forward a little bit and talk about some of the other herbs. Um, and then we'll come back to it. One thing that I didn't mention in the beginning of the handout um, is all about greens and vegetables. So on um, page eight, I put a whole thing about adding greens into your diet and nutritional plan. They are so key for the immune system because we need the chlorophyll. I'm not gonna go over that with you today. That's not like the main point, but because I, I'm so passionate about nutrition and that how important it is. I just put that information for you all to come back. We have a very limited time today, so I would put information in here. Of course, we're not gonna go over it all today, but I want you to know how valuable it is. So you'll see um, ways to add greens in, the benefits of chlorophyll. It's so important for helping the body to detox. Um, uh, just as a side note, if you have had the, the vaccine, most people have at this point, I really recommend bringing a lot of greens in because we wanna, they're not FDA approved at this point in time. We don't know what is in the vaccine. We want our body to get rid of anything it doesn't need, right? So um, I am really recommending to all my patients that they bring on some sort of chlorophyll to help the body to have some kind of detox. So that's just as a side note. That's my own personal opinion about that. Um, Okay, great. So let's move back to page 15. Okay, and all right, so uh, we're going to be talking about bone set. Do you all remember we, I introduced you to bone set? It's page 14. Yeah, page, oh, sorry, it's 14. <laughs> sorry, I have a, my, I printed it out before I sent it to the Staples. Uh, I'm going to let you pass it around. Um, so yes, page 14, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, and so bone set, the Latin name is eupatorium. Um, and we're really thinking again, we're in the immune system category. I want you to feel the leaves as it's going around. It's a little sticky, okay? So when you think about eupatorium or bone set, we actually don't use it for setting bones. It's just like one of its common names, um, but it's sticky. So when I think about, you know, I'm always, there's so many herbs and for me, I'm like, you know, remembering them all and also all the Latin names, there's a lot of information. So 
how can I remember it? I'm like, okay, I know the leaves feel sticky. It's gonna help like gather up all this stuff and then get it out of my system, right? Like, you know, whatever you can remember. So um, it is, again, the common name does not help to heal fractures, <laughs> but it heals infection. So it's helping the bones. And I think it was probably used a long time ago in like folklore, probably for like bone infections and that bone, you know, bone setting. Um, but there's not evidence that I know of that helps heal fractures. So um, it is a flu remedy. This is what I want you to remember about bone set. Number one, for flu. Number one for flu. So you got a flu coming on, and some of you don't know if it's a cold or flu, <laughs> right? They can they can live the same kind of path. Just boom, I want to start taking my echinacea and eupatorium or bone set right away. Um, it's an immune stimulant. It's also a bitter digestive. So if you have a stomach flu, this is a really good one to bring on because it will help with the bitterness, help the digestive juices from the mouth start to stimulate and help to soothe the digestive tract. Also calendula, which we're gonna talk about. It's a spasmolytic, so it helps with uh, lung spasms as well as digestive spasms. So you know when you have that cough and you just like can't stop coughing, you're like, uh, 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 like over and over, this is the great one to use. We also use it um, homeopathically in the same way for that like constant cough that you can't get rid of. Um, it is an anodyne. It again helps with pain. That's probably where that like bone set comes into. So um, you know when you have a flu, and your bones ache, this is what you want to take. Immediately, you're like, ah, oh, just my whole body hurts. Bone set, eupatorium, right? And so that will help you to remember. And then it's also anti-neoplastic. So it's helping again with that like anti-cancer, anti-neoplastic standpoint. When do we want to use it? When we have a URI, respiratory tract infection, um, or stomach flu, indigestion, dyspepsia, that kind of like irritated stomach. Sometimes I'll use it in a formula or even by itself if I've gone out and have a really heavy meal. Like, um, I'm not quite sure, like sometimes, or even sushi. <laughs> you know, I love to eat sushi and I'm not quite sure, like maybe, you know, there was something in it I shouldn't have eaten. Um, I'll use some of the bone set because it will help my digestion, but then also like get rid of any, you know, weird things that could be in the sushi that I might not want to be ingesting. So anyway, that's just a little fun caveat. Um, then you have your dosage here. You're gonna be using again um, for acute chronic, and there's I put the child and an elder. You'll see that throughout the book where it says like you know what to how do you adjust that dose, and um, you really want to adjust it kind of like to the body size of the person. So if you're you, you know let's say you're gonna be giving some bone set to a six year old, it's gonna be a lot different than your body size, right? So the average. Um, acute dose is three mils every two to three hours. You're gonna adjust that to the size of the person, right? So maybe you're doing like 10 drops for a, a small child in water, like, you know, over the whole day, just to like stimulating their immune system. Um, there is this book here. Oh, I love this book. It's a great one by um, Dr. Tilgner, um, Herbal Medicine. And I, you guys can come up and look at this one. Um, in the back, she has all that kind of thing, like dosing, you know, that's like, um, and how much, and it's much more in detail than what I'm doing right now. But um, it's great as a resource. And this is a great one. Okay. So with the set, do mm -hmm. you, um, would you want to dry everything before you make the tea, or could you just like Oh yeah. And then make mm -hmm. the tea? Yeah, so you can do two different methods. Uh, you can do a, an infusion, a fresh infusion, or dried, right? So <clears throat> with bone set and with teas, if you, say like you, you're in the winter, you probably don't have access to it, you know, fresh. Um, so I always do kind of like, when I'm growing things at the farm and working with the vets and making the medicine, the three things we do, we harvest it, we use it fresh if we can, we straight into tincture. Um, if you have it in your garden and you're feeling ill, you can use it straight away if you have it fresh, uh, but make sure you're drying a lot of it so you can use it over the season. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yes, you can make a fresh infusion. So you take the leaf off, you, and then you would put it into like a jar, <laughs> right? You would fill up your jar and then add your hot water and then infuse it, infuse it for 10 to 15 minutes and then strain it and that would be your medicine there. Um, so you can definitely do that. If it's in a dried form, it's of course is gonna be like more concentrated, right? Cause when you dry this up, this whole jar would probably be like a teaspoon, maybe. 
<laughs> run too dry the herb it shrinks right so um this i would use like this much for like a pot but i would use one tablespoon for making the whole tea does that make sense um okay so that's bone set it's contraindicated with pregnancy chronic use and patients with serious liver disease a lot of the studies that have been done on herbal medicine have been done on rats and they found that when they're doing the studies with rats that they will they had a lot of liver problems well a rat is very tiny they don't have the same size liver as us so we some of the herbs have gotten a kind of a bad reputation when it comes to liver disease but we still want to use caution like okay of course there is some where they did a study and there were the there was problems with liver disease from this particular animal well of course we, if we have a liver problem we want to use caution okay so that's why i put this information in here but also we want to think about too like okay if they did a little small animal what's the difference with me right <laughs> so um just just think about those things when you're using your medicine. Okay, let's pass around, I'm gonna pass around these things here. Okay, um, I'll pass those, and then this side. So here's the dried echinacea and the dried bone set. I'm just gonna let you pass those around to look at it. And then also, um, we're gonna do the elderberry, which we're gonna talk about next. So you also dried the flower. Yes, the bone the bone set is um, you you we use the leaf and the flower, all the aerial parts, and um, so when you're drying it in your dehydrator, and if you want to check out the ones that we have in the office, um, I can show you those. Um, you want to have a good dehydrator that you're using to make, and they're inexpensive to dry your plants, and so here we're using the flower and the leaf. So elderberry is Sambuca, Sambucus condensis or Sambucus nigra. So you can see it kind of is named after when the berries are in this dark uh, shape here or color, I mean. Okay, um, so elderberry, it's immune uh, modulating. It's also anti-allergic, great for the allergy season, good for bacterial infections, flus, virus, cold. Um, uh, I have included an elderberry syrup recipe here for you because that's, I think, the best way to make elderberry. It's so yummy, super easy, and we're not gonna make it today, but I wanted to make sure that you had it. So that's how we made your immune booster. We made the syrup, and then we did a half and half ratio with the immune tincture, the elderberry tincture that we made, and then we combined it with the, um, I'm sorry, the echinacea tincture and the elderberry syrup. So you can make that on your own, super easy. If you don't have time, or you don't have the garden, right? Like you can buy the things and make them on your own. You could buy echinacea root. Um, you probably won't see it like in this form with the cone and the flower, but you can buy dried. You can make you can make a tincture from dried form. It does not have to be fresh plant matter. So say um, you're like, oh gosh, I really want to make a turmeric tincture, but I don't have any turmeric. Well, no problem. You can buy the turmeric and you can make your own. So I didn't mention that. I want to make sure everybody's clear on that. So you can always make something from a dried plant. So a lot of times what we'll do here, we don't have all you know the resources to make or the space to make all the tinctures at once. So you, once it's dried, say we're gonna make a thyme tincture, we could dry this and then make the tincture from the dried matter. You always just wanna write on the container what you did. Did it come from fresh? Did it come from dry? It is gonna taste different and it's gonna have different properties, but it's still highly powerful. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, because the drive is more concentrated, would the tincture be more powerful than? It can be, yeah, and so you use, you want to use like less. Yeah, so like say if I filled up this entire jar with dried turmeric, it would be a lot of turmeric, and I actually did that. <laughs> I made like a massive turmeric tincture, not the whole jar, but I gave some to um, a patient and it, everything I touched was yellow. Like I had yellow all over me, <laughs> everywhere in the office, like so it was, it was a little strong, I think. Um, so, but yeah, it will make it strong. And when, what I recommend if you're going to use dried is to use less. So remember how I talked about using um, like a little fairy bed in here with the fresh? You want to use like half that material when it's dried. So if you were going to do a whole jar um, of fresh material, like half a jar of dried. 
at least. And you know, and then, um, and you just write it on there. So you know it's concentrated. There's different formulas that we make too. So when we take a 100% of the uh, herb and we combine 100% of the liquid, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And you'll see that written on the back when you buy like a bottle of the store, like one to one. Say we used um, five parts of the herb to one part, then it would be five to one or whatever. So I would just write the percentage. Like I'd be like, okay, I use this much herb to this much alcohol, and then write it on your label. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so elderberry syrup, you have a great recipe there for you. And um, you can use fresh. Like I m mentioned, you can use the fresh, but you have to cook them first, <laughs> okay? So you can use the, you can harvest them and then make your tincture, but you can't make the tinct, you can't eat them. <laughs> okay, so you have to cook them and then use them. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then you can use honey or maple syrup or glycerin. You can use any of those things. You don't have to use glycerin. Um, I like to use honey sometimes by making an, uh, an allergy specific elderberry syrup because, you know, hun our local honey is so good for helping mm -hmm. with allergies. Um, and then sometimes people don't like glycerin or like the way it tastes or they just want to use something different. So you can use any of those three forms, but it's the same amount. Okay, um, and then you can add other things to it. You can add vanilla bean, you could add cinnamon, you could add orange, you could add ginger, you could add cloves, you can add mushrooms, you could add other herbs. So you can make your syrup however you like it. I like, when I make it at home, I like to make it kind of uh, citrusy. So I like to add the orange and the lemon. Sometimes I'll even add some essential oils. Um, I love to have vanilla in it, a little cinnamon. So make it how you like it, experiment and have fun with it. Um, Okay, let's see here. Calendula is our last one. I didn't do a huge amount on calendula because we're going to be covering it highly in the pain and inflammation one. So, but I wanted to just touch on it here because I mentioned it today. So that's the yellow flower here that we met in the garden, and its dried form is here. And um, we use the petals. That's the only part that we use. We don't use the leaf and we don't use the, just the petals. Yeah, so we use like when you're harvesting it and you can, this is an easy one you can grow on your own in your garden. It's so pretty too. So you just clip off the bottom and then you dry this whole thing. Um, and you can use this whole part here with the center part um, or you can pull off the petals too. You can see we've harvested it. It's, it is a time consuming herb if you take all that off, but you can dry it just in this way too. And I can show you what that looks like. I can pull it out. Um, again, it's an anti-inflammatory. So when I like to use uh, calendula and recommend using the tinctures, which um, this is what it looks like in its tincture form. So um, it hasn't been strained yet. So I'll pass this around. You can see it's just, I, we just harvested the whole flower and just stuck it in the alcohol and then it's brewing in there. Um, I always think of like, you know, when you go into the apothecary and there's all these things on the shelves, you're like, that's what it looks like. like oh, it's like some kind of crazy brain in there. <laughs> but it's not, it's a flower. Still four to six weeks to <laughs> Yes, four to six weeks is the minimum. Again, but you can do longer, like, you know, Sometimes you forget what you have in there. What you'll see is you start making stuff. Uh, um, you're like, oh yeah, I gotta strain that. Another thing, is some people will say that if you're just starting, you really want to kind of pay more attention to what you have going on in there. So if you're, you know, like, okay, I didn't remember for a year, maybe you want to be using it. <laughs> um, so again, calendula is great for information, inflammation, bacterial infections, really good for gut. So if you have a specific, again, you could combine it with bone set, that bitter stimulant for the immune system for that dyspepsia if you have a stomach flu. I put on here uh, just a few of the other immune uh, herbs for you to just have it to start thinking about. I also wrote them up here for you as well. Um, and we're going to be going back and making a tea. And so there's some immune stimulants, a diaphoretic. There's also an Im immunomodulator. I mentioned what those were. So a yarrow, sorry, is the um, immune stimulant or the diaphoretic. Diaphoretic makes you sweat. Why would you want to have something that makes you sweat? 
Yes, and if you're if you're sick, right? If you have the flu, you want to sweat. Your body, it's, it's a natural thing that it does when you have a temperature is you want to be sweating, right? Because your body's trying to kill the virus and the bacteria. <laughs> That's its purpose. So actually when we take something, a pharmaceutical, to suppress our body's ability to cause a fever, it's not good. Unless it's really, really, really high, of course. But when we have a fever, it's a good thing. Our body's saying, yes, I need to burn this off. So when we take something like yarrow, it's a diaphoretic, and it then comes in and it actually helps us to sweat to burn things off. So adding it to immune formulas is really good. Um, of course, you know, we need to have pharmaceuticals for specific things. So if we have something that's a really, really high fever and we are in the hospital, we need to have that help to bring our temperature down as quickly as possible. Um, immune immunomodulators, aloe, you might have heard of that one, astragalus. Pulmonary antimicrobials, so that's all about something for the respiratory system. Really good to add those in. Eucalyptus and thyme, we're gonna be using that. And you don't have to pass these back up because we're gonna be using them. So I'm gonna, uh, you can just keep them in your area. Um, so thyme is a wonderful essential oil as well as an herb, and we can use it antimicrobially and as an antibacterial. Um, a stimulating expectorant. So that is a herb that we use to stimulate stuff to get mucus out, right? When we want it, when you're like, oh, I'm so congested, it's like stuck in there. Then you want to use a blood root or mullein. You might have seen mullein. Mullein is real, it's common. It grows around here a lot. It's like a big, like kind of look like a mule leaves. Um, they're soft and it gets really, really, really tall and it has a yellow top. We might have some on the other side over there. Um, I can look and I can see, I can pick some. Uh, but that's a great one for the respiratory system. It, a demulcent, so that's the next one, a pulmonary demulcent. A demulcent is something that soothes the tract. So we have um, tubes through our whole body, right? So we wanna soothe the tract, the digestive tract, the respiratory tract, and then we have a relaxing expect expectorant. That's a spasmolytic. That's when we're uh, coughing so much, right? So we're having a spasm that relaxes the body's ability to expectorate. So those are just a few of your extras there. Okay, I think we're ready. Okay. <laughs> we are now beginning <laughs> phase two. <laughs> Um, okay, so welcome back. Did everyone have a nice break? Harvesting echinacea in the garden and touring around. And um, there was a sh there's a sheep being passed around. If you're interested in volunteering here at the farm, we always need help. Especially we'll have like a big uh, push where we need to have a lot of things harvested all at once, like when we go to the VA hospital. So um, if you're interested in, and if you don't see a time on there, or I think that was, somebody was asking about Saturdays and Sundays, we always need help in many, many, many different ways. So if you want to help out, we'd love to have you. Um, okay, the finishing up what we were talking about with the herbal section, I just wanted to mention we're not going to talk about the mushrooms in the back, but I did want to just mention them. Because mushrooms are really, really great for the immune system. There's lots that have been studied um, and lots of ones specifically for cancer or anti-cancer. Um, but the, Oh, and here I put up resources for you guys. <clears throat> Can you see it if I put it over here? Does that work for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Um, so these are two websites or two companies, Mountain Grows Herbs and Star West Botanicals if you're wanting to buy dried herb. Um, this is a great source. I put a W here because they have wholesale. So if you have the ability, if you like, if you have your own business or something like that, and you can buy wholesale, this is where I get mine from. Um, they have every lots of different things. You'll see they have oils if you want to make, buy oils. They have the glycerite, you can get the glycerite. So they have everything, of uh, both of those. And if you want to get bottles, so I didn't mention, but I'm sorry, let's keep borrowing all of your stuff, David. <laughs> I brought a little bit of back. So when you're uh, finalizing your medicine and you're putting it into a container, you want to make sure it's in a dark bottle, not clear glass. So you can do amber, you can do blue, you can do green. So all the, these two companies, SKS and Specialty Bottle, you can buy anything you want. <laughs> all the different sizes. Uh, atomizers, roll-ons, chapstick, tins, glasses, if you want to buy ones for storage, anything like that, those are great resources for you there. 
Um, I'm not, I don't have any affiliation with them. I'm just saying that's where I get stuff from. They're easy. They're easy, right? And we want to, and you know, you know, you can buy stuff, of course, on Amazon, not herbs. Definitely don't buy any herbs on Amazon, but you can do <laughs> bottles and, and containers. But let's try to support companies like, you know, other companies that also you'll get a much better deal because, you know, they're also made for making medicine. And so like sometimes if you buy a, like a bottle or something from Amazon, it will come and it, the plastic, the lid doesn't fit right or, you know, they're not, that's not their goal. They just want to sell stuff. So let's support some of these other companies. What about these bags? Uh, those bags. Where did I get those bags? You said Amazon. You said I did. I did get. Yes, I did. Get those from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. Right. But a, a specialty bottle, I think, or maybe SKS has the bags, or one of these does have bags. Um, but we, there's those, and then also in your bag. Can I borrow this for a second? I'll show the, um, the tea. There, we, you have a sample of tea that we make here at the farm. All these herbs are grown here, and you can also get these bags. And I like them because they have, you know, different sizes. You can get the, the thing on the back and great for gifts. And you can also get the silver bags, mylar bags, much larger for storage. That's what we use here. So then you're using something that has no light. You know, you can take all the air up, you know, and then so you can store it really well. And they store really great and they're cheap. So that's a way, you know, a lot of herbalists will store jars. Um, in a dark place, but who has room for all that? I mean, that takes a lot of space. Like our, we're exploding out of our closet. So if you have it in a mylar bag, I feel like you can like, you know, you put them under your bed, you know, like they can be stored really easy. So that's a great way, just label them. Okay, mushrooms. So in, on page 21, I put a whole section on immunity boosting medicinal mushrooms. So we're not gonna talk about mushrooms today, but I wanted to make sure you had this information. Mushrooms are fabulous. They've been well studied in Chinese med medicine and Western medicine for their use in immunity. Okay, so there I put two of my favorites, wheat reishi, which you can harvest reishi here um, in our area. You need to go with somebody who knows how to get it and what it looks like because it's usually <laughs> a pretty high. I can never harvest by myself, but um, <laughs> you can easily harvest it here in the forest. Um, if you're, the trees yeah, the yeah, it looks like it's like orange. It kind of looks like a big kind of like foot. The, the hangs out on the tree like this mm -hmm. um and so but mushrooms they can look like other mushrooms right so if you're gonna wild harvest mushrooms go with someone who's harvested it before knows what it looks like and can help you harvest and that's i think that's true with all wild crafting in general um but uh it's fun to harvest mushrooms it's really fun okay Great, so you can review, review that other information there. Now we're gonna move on to the immunity one. It says essential oils for immunity. And uh, you'll see the same layout here. I just made two notebooks so you can easily put them into your uh, book for the whole summer if you're attending all of our workshops. In the beginning, there's the uh, introduction, there's a little more about me, <laughs> you can read more. Um, and then there's on page, it's either three or four in your book, there's all about essential oils. So that's where I'm gonna start. So essential oils, if you're new to the world of essential oils and aromatherapy, they are so fun. I really love to use them because they're easy for us to make an easy switch quickly, right? So one, they're e easily accessible. They, um, access the limbic system very quickly so right to the brain and the nervous system and they also help physically but also emotionally you know we have a lot of emotions that are connected through our body through memory and so when we use essential oils it helps us to break through a memory or to remember you know something that is really uh, personal or loving whatever it is it helps us to bring that up and then uh, like ignite that memory and healing quality within so essential oils are a great way because they go through the olfactory system immediately access the brain and immediately feel a shift when they're used topically we immediately feel their effects so I really like essential oils there's a wide variety and today we're gonna be talking about <laughs> Ta -da! Um, the ones here with stars. So we're gonna talk about lemon, oregano, lavender, ginger, and peppermint. I picked these here for you because they're really easily uh, accessible. They're easily to get. Sometimes essential oils are harder and um, you wanna make sure that you're getting something that is from a good source. 
and is pure, it's not adulterated. And these are just some of the others that are for immunity. Tea tree, clove, lime, cinnamon, thyme, orange, grapefruit, rosemary, eucalyptus, cypress. So again, as I mentioned before, the, since it's an herb, it's going in its original state, that plant form, it's gonna have a lot of constituents. So the same with herbs, essential oils, they'll usually have like one superpower and then they have you know the 12 minor superpowers. <laughs> and so um, when you're using essential oils, start at the basics. I usually recommend you know getting maybe the top eight. And these are some of the ones that I definitely put in those top eight or 10. So you can just start small. It's just like with anything, you don't wanna you know, open up your whole refrigerator and make a gourmet meal if you've never cooked before, right? So you wanna start small, bring on the basic essential oils, and then start expanding your knowledge and kit, okay? So essential oils were first discovered. There was a scientist in France and he had his lab and he was making all this great stuff and he burned himself. Um, and he had a vat of essential oil lavender really close by and he stuck his arm in there <laughs> and the burn went away really quickly. And so that was kind of like the first like, oh, maybe I can use these essential oils for blank. And so he started uh, investigating more and of course they're used widely in the perfume world, right? We use that aroma because people love the way that things smell, um, but we also use them from the healing aspect as well. And they work, like I said, going through that olfactory system to the nervous system. And when we think about, you know, if you think about the spine, right, the vertebrae of the spine, and all the nerves that come out of the spine, they all communicate with the rest of our body. So if we're smelling something, then going on into the nervous system, think about all the different ways it can communicate. It can communicate to increase uh, digestion. It can communicate to decrease pain. It can boost our immune system. So essential oils, in, especially in combination with herbs, make your arsenal, your toolkit, like a superpower, right? And so that's why I like really teaching and combining them together. So one thing about safety with essential oils is they are really, really, really strong. Um, and you wanna make sure that if you're using them and if you have children nearby, they're stored in a place that they're not accessible, they could ingest them. Same with any herbal medicine, but especially with um, essential oils, keep them out of the reach of children. And you wanna again, keep them in a dark place, in a dark, a dark bottle, so they're not exposed to light and stay cool. So um, that's just a little bit about safety. And then also, not all essential oils can be taken internally, only a few. So you wanna use caution with those and make sure you're um, looking it up in a book or reading about the oil or reading the label or knowing all those different things because they can be really toxic. Think about like when we um, take, for instance, time here. If we take all this time, it probably wouldn't even make one drop of essential oil, wow. right? It takes a huge amount to make. It's very, very, very concentrated. So you can think about using something internally. If we use like, you know, this whole table full of herb in one drop, our body is gonna have a really large reaction. So they can be toxic to the system. So we wanna use caution with that. And then also they can be very toxic to the skin. If you have very sensitive skin, uh, like myself, like fair skin, I'm sensitive to some of the citrus oils and the spicy ones. So if you're gonna be using them topically in a roll-on like we're gonna make today, I would suggest patch testing it. So you, to do that, you wanna roll it or place the oil on the crook of your arm and then leave it there 12 to 24 hours, like either with a Band-Aid or just leave it open and then see if you have a reaction. For me, usually I know way faster than that. Like, oh yeah, I have a rash developing. I'm not gonna use that oil topically um, without it being diluted with a bunch of other oils. Or when we use an oil neat, it's called, uh, or when we use an oil by itself, it's called NEAT, N-E-A-T. And that's just like if I took one drop of lavender and I put it on my skin, right? And so when we, if you know you have a sensitivity, you definitely want to use more carrier oil in combining them together. Does that make sense? Um, and so you can do that process with any of the, er, the essential oils. Some of them you'll see in the specifics I wrote here, if they um, have a phototoxicity. And what that means is if, if you use the oil topically and you go out into the sun, it's exemplified and you can actually get burned. Oh. So you want to make sure that, you know, like, okay, I'm going to make this a uh, roll on. I want to make sure I'm not going to go outside and get burned. Like I made a cool off spray 
Um, we can pass those around. If you um, are hot today, you can spray it on you and your environment. Of course, I wouldn't want to use oils in there that would be phototoxic because if you were good, you know, use them and go outside and then be burned, you know, it wouldn't be the best cooling. But uh, this is an easy, you know, just you'll, you'll see a super, something easy you can do right now in the summer. I love cool off sprays because I get really hot, um, especially working in the garden. So you can keep them in the refrigerator if you're going, you know, on a picnic or anything like that. And you can just um, spray them around your environment or spray them on your skin, anything like that. Okay? All right, we talked about that. Yeah, that's your hand sanitizer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, so on your, on, your, your table. on your table there are hand sanitizers. Those are different. Uh, but yeah, um, so don't, yeah, but you could, I mean, it's fine if you use that in your environment. Okay, so the ways that we can use essential oils, we can use them in a spray like you just saw. We can use them in a massage oil, you know, a nice relaxing environment. You could put them into a salt bath, an Epsom salt bath. You could do a foot bath. You can use them uh, orally, like I said, and inhalation. So inhalation is of course super easy and I love that's one of my favorite methods. Um, you can use them in a diffuser and I put some information here uh, in your handout. And this is just like, a, this is a little travel diffuser. I like these ones because then I can travel. I, I put it in my suitcase, it's super tiny. Um, I haven't been doing as much of that lately, but I will be hopefully. Um, but uh, so this is easy. You just add the water and the um, essential oils and then it diffuses your environment. So for me, I like to use essential oils. When do I use them? When I'm uh, waking up in the morning, energizing my day. If I'm gonna do a meditation, um, if do I want to have in my environment clean, is sanitized, do I wanna help with my digestion? I mean, there's so many ways that we can use them. Um, and like I said, there's a bunch of books up here. I really like this one, The Modern Essential Usage Guide. If you haven't had a chance to come up and look, this is a really fabulous one. It goes by and uses like, um, if you're just starting out, it's just a wonderful reference. Each oil, how to use it, what the contraindications are, the methods, how to combine it with other oils. This is a really good one. Um, and it also goes, it talks about the oil, but then it also will go into the specifics of this, the, um, say you wanna look up something for, I don't know, bug bites, right? And so you can go to that in the book and it will tell you these oils are for this. So it's really good for helping to use an oil if you're just starting out, you don't know. So that's a good one. All right, so let's get into, let's get oily. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna pass around here, let's see. What we wanna do is these ones. And what's gonna start, I'm gonna put them here for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, these can go on that side. Yeah, we have some Okay, so don't pass them yet. We're gonna, once, how I like to do the introduction with oils and herbs, as you saw, we met them all, right? Is we wanna take the, uh, we wanna smell them as we're meeting them because the olfactory system is part of our memory, right? So if we're gonna be smelling the oil and then we're gonna be talking about what the oil, its purpose is, it helps us to remember. So that's really great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, woo, super. Okay, so let's talk about lemon. Lemon is great for the immune system. So what I want you to do is if you're in the front row, Lillian, David, and Melissa, mm -hmm. smell the uh, lemon and then pass it back, okay? So other people can smell it. So lemon is great and essential oils, okay? So this is what it came from, <laughs> right? It came from this lemon and it was processed down through the essential oil process, which is very complicated, as not like an herb, they have to use, it goes through a machine, they have to take the, uh, the rind, then it has to be defused. We uh, have one here as an, that we don't use, but um, the process to get one drop is such a, I just wanna, I'm just stressing it because I want you to really value the process of the essential oil. The process that it takes to take one lemon, which I don't know, maybe we get, get a drop from one lemon, and to make the oil is such an extreme thing for the environment, mm -hmm. right? So we wanna make sure we're really valuing the essential oil, not only for the medicinal side, but also for the environment, right? Like if we're gonna take 10,000 rose petals and make one drop, how many plants did that have to give for us to have the medicine, right? So it's a lot. So I just wanted to, you know, make sure I said that again to everyone. 
Okay, so lemon oil is not only great for the immune system, but it's great for detoxification. You probably know that for like drinking lemon water daily. It's a really good one. It's super great for colds and flus, really intense ones. Also, it's going to boost your immune system naturally. So we're talking again about that immune booster. So using them to turn on the volume. And lemon, or not lemon, essential oils have a common name and a Latin name, just like the herbs. So it's uh, yes. the lemon is the common name and the botanical name is citrus limon, okay? So when you're looking for essential oils or buying them at the store, whatever your source is, you wanna make sure you're getting the right, again, the right Latin name. Um, and they're not diluted and adulterated, like like if you buy, I wouldn't recommend buying them on Amazon. Again, I'm sorry I keep saying Amazon, but I just wanna let you know that there's sources that you wanna make sure that you're getting something pure. Like I wouldn't recommend, I don't tell any of my patients to buy supplements on Amazon, because you don't know where they're coming from, that you don't know where they've been stored, where they stored coolie, where they stored in a hot warehouse, you don't, you don't know. So you wanna make sure that where you're buying from is a pure source, because it's expensive and you want the medicine to do its job. Um, so we use the brine of the lemon. I don't know what they do with the other part <laughs> when they make it. I'm sure they make it lemon juice or something. Um, so you're gonna see in each essential oil, you're gonna see the scent section. So clean, fresh, citrus, bright. So you can use essential oils solely as a single oil, but you can also use them as a blend. Same with the herbs. And so when we're picking things to use as a uh, community combo, right? We're making a blend. Then we want to pick things that kind of like have the same relationship as other plants, like lemon. What other citrus plants go together with that? Or maybe I'm making a specific immune formula where I want a particular properties, which we're going to go into. So then I put the main chemical constituents. So again, it's like the herb. It's going to have a specific constituent and that is going to then be the main component that activates that property of the plant. And so then you have the property section. So anti-anemic, anti it's great for anemia. Antimicrobial, so we're talking about the immune system here. It's gonna be antimicrobial, antiviral. And let me mention these other two books, which um, I really like for the herbal side. I didn't mention. Um, if you wanna go like a little bit deeper, these are really great ones for, this one is the antibiotic and the antiviral. These are really great, or they're very intensive and deeper, but really good for um, adding to your herbal collection if you're wanting to expand out, and specifically if you're wanting these categories, if you're working a lot with the immune system. So you can come up and take a look at those later. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> So again, antimicrobial, anti-rheumatic. So that means, again, there's a glossary in the back. Anti-rheumatic means against rheumatism, right? So that's like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. cetera. Um, antiseptic, really great for wound healing and cleaning. Well, not particular wound healing, cleaning your um, environment. Bactericidal, so using in a spray, like if you're gonna make your own cleaning products, lemon is great for that. Most of the citrus ones have these same properties. That's why I only picked you know, like a, one citrus one we're going over to today. They're very similar. Lemon, uh, orange, lime, all have very similar properties. Bergamot is a little bit different. It's a, it's a kind of it's a, like the wild fruit, <laughs> right? So we use, it has different properties. It's used a lot for the um, nervine system. We covered that one for anxiety and depression last and two weeks ago. So, but if you're thinking about combining oils and using essential oils i pulled out some of the other ones today and i'll pass those around so if you want to use or smell any of the other ones lemon grapefruit snake tangerine is here somewhere um i'll just pass them here this way so if you want to smell any of those other ones and see like well what's the difference between the lemon they do have a different aroma of course and scent but we can use them interchangeably okay um it's also carminative that means it's going to help increased digestion in the mouth. So it starts, it's like a bitter, a carminative is. It stirs up the digestion in a good way, stimulates digestion for a meal, like if you're having a heavy meal. And that's what that detoxification aspect is with the lemon essential oil, right? It will help get the body going. That's why it's so wonderful to drink lemon water in the morning when you get up, right? With either a fresh um, 
slice of lemon or I like will have, make a big glass and put one drop like a huge bottle and put one drop of lemon for the whole day and that will help with that detoxification you can use that one internally um, it's also a diaphoretic so remember we talked about diaphoretics are what's going to increase sweat right so we really it's a great one to use again for fever and it's a fever fuge again for fever hypotensive which means it helps with low blood pressure insecticidal so it's great for bug spray um, and also I put it in the cool off spray uh, today it's in there and um, it's a tonic as well so really amazing benefits of lemon essential oil um, and it also cleans and purifies the air and surfaces that's one of the main things that we're going to be using it for today so we're going to make a spray with a lemon oil to help your environment and you can use when we're talking about cleaning we can use like on a surface right but we or we could use it as an aroma diffuser to clean uh, the area like when we're traveling or in our car maybe we need things to more be more pure pure or maybe we're trying to clean the environment energetically like maybe there was a lot of you know i don't know bad stuff around us yeah, energetically negative, negative it thank you negative en energy right so we can use any type of the oils that are good for clearing clarity that type of thing okay um so again for body it's going to detoxify the body help improve digestion really great for nausea you might have had like lemon and ginger together those are it's a really great anti-nausea remedy um also promotes skin health so really good for toning the skin putting it into like a roll-on or it's great for cellulite grapefruit's really good for cellu oh. cellulite <laughs> we're like oh wait, wait 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 what was that one <laughs> um so yeah you can use it as a roll-on for cellulite um and then also great for killing germs antibacteria and it uplifts the mood so this is one of the reasons again immunity is so important but when we're talking about uh teaching about herbs and essential oils here at the farm i'm always thinking about ways i can help the veterans to uplift their mood everyone in general but i know that's a big piece that i've there you guys are always talking to me about so lemon is a wonderful one for uplifting the environment and you know when you smell a lemon you're like ah right it just like makes you feel good so you can use it in those formulas um and for your mind it's really good for clarity for helping you focus so i love to use it in a spray on my desk not only is it gonna you know help clean my desk but also to help me to focus and i feel like oh do i have to do another hour of computer work okay i can do it you know <laughs> so it can really help with that um and spirit from that emotional spiritual level it helps to just lift the spirit so all of the oils we're going to talk about today will kind of have those three categories because now we're like herbs also work in that way but essential oils because they work on the mind the body and the spirit at such a quick access we use them a lot more on those three levels and i have another what did i do with that little thing oh, there it goes. um this is a fun thing i wanted to pass around it's emotions and the essential oils wheel so it's really cool uh it's got both sides um, I don't remember where I got it, oh, but there's a website on here. It's just something I found, you know, so you can look at it. No, they, yeah, I don't know where I got it. But um, I laminated it, and then that, and it's really, it's really cool because you'll see, like, say for instance, you're looking for, like, hmm, I think I'm, I'm looking for, um, anyway, what would be, uh, to be more grounded. Okay, so then we'll tell you, well, this one has a blend on it, but let's look for something that's more interesting. Um, to be more balanced, so it says patchouli. So anyway, I'm gonna pass it around and let you look at it. It might be something you're interested in, but um, it's, I think it's fun. I'm always looking for that kind of thing, because it's nice to have something that you can go to right away. We're all real, yeah, reference. We're all really busy, right? We only have so much brain capacity. So if we have something that we can go to really quickly, that's easy, like my book. Um, <laughs> sorry, I have to do it again. <laughs> um, but uh, if you have an easy reference, then you're able to go really quickly. And then you start remembering those references, which is why I also brought all these other books too, right? So you know like, oh yeah, where was that formula for jet lag? I'm, you know, and then you can go right to it, because sometimes you remember, but sometimes you don't. So I, I love to give you all references, okay. Let's make a purifying room spray. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to be using your spray bottle, this one here, okay? And I put 
three oils, lemon. We haven't talked about peppermint and rosemary, but we will. Um, we're not gonna do rosemary today, but we're gonna talk about peppermint. If you want to use a different oil besides the lemon, like if you liked, like that was going around, the um, grapefruit, grapefruit or the orange, um, and I also have lime, there's another lemon too. You can uh, feel free to mix those up for the same amount of drops, okay? But we're gonna use the other um, ones, the peppermint and the rosemary in that formula. So when it comes to making essential oil blends, you see way more specific about the amount of drops because <laughs> it can completely change the way something smells. As opposed to like, you know, if we put in an extra teaspoon of a dried herb, maybe we wouldn't really tell that much. But if we put in an extra five drops of a, of a blend, it could completely ruin it, right? So let's talk about how we're gonna make this. You're gonna take your, I'm gonna borrow this. <laughs> oh, this one? Oh, I have one on my desk. I have one. I can use this one. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take our bottle and we're going to use distilled water. Distilled water is great because it doesn't have any additives, no chlorine, etc. And we're going to add the water to our bottle. That's what we're going to do first. Step one. So we have some water and we have some little containers. We have some fennel, uh, not fennel, <laughs> funnels. Um, but if you're a good pourer, you can use, we have lots of little, um, these guys too. So you can use these. So what you're going to do, this is a uh, two ounce bottle or 60 milliliters, okay? So you'll see on these ones that are gonna pass around, there's a 60 on here. So you're gonna fill up here to 60 on your little container and then you're gonna pour it into here, okay? You can use a funnel or you can use your container. This is your, this is your, uh, it's water. It's okay if it's on you. <laughs> Um, here's a funnel. We have, I have only one tiny one. Yeah. Okay, so that's step one. So step one, fill up your container. Here, do you want to try to no. These, uh, this has a little, uh, um, the cool off spray that I made for everyone that was going around, um, that one has witch hazel, so that's a toner. So you can use, there's different things you can use as your like base. So you can use, witch hazel is great if you're wanting something to be more, um, like to tone the environment and you want it to be more stable. Water is just water and it doesn't, it hasn't, doesn't have the same stable properties. Like the hand sanitizer that you have on your tables that we made for the boot camp um, uses a hand sanitizer base and then we add the oil. So sometimes you can use a base, but water is easy. You can use water, you can use, but don't use like alcohol, use witch hazel as your, as your medium. Um, and you know, which hazel is easy to get through one of these sources, or you can just usually they have them at the store. It's just straight, straight witch hazel. Um, it is a plant medicine that we use, <laughs> but you can also just buy it at the store. Next, we're going to add our essential oils to the container. Now, a couple things about essential oils. Um, they come out very quickly, right, Tamlin? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Some, some, <laughs> some don't. Some are thick. So you know, every essential oil comes from a plant. It comes from either a root or a leaf or a resin or a flower petal. So it's, the consistency is going to be different for every single one. So if you're doing a resin, it's going to take like an hour for one drop to come out, right? Like frankincense and myrrh sometimes going to be slower. But ginger, or this is ginger, so it's gonna come out quickly, and I suggest holding it, like slowly turning it, having it that 45 degree angle, and then watching the drops come out, like. So you can quickly, like, stop the drops from coming out if needed, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna take your lemon, or maybe you're using grapefruit, or lime, or wild orange, and if you don't have it in front of you, it'll be passed around shortly. We have them being dispersed. Yep. Seven drops of that citrus into your bottle. And then three drops of peppermint. Did the peppermint go around? So I have uh, here's, some, here's some more peppermint and rosemary. So we're gonna make two different ones. She's gonna make Okay, yeah. Yes. I would just use the other same ones. Same ones like with these guys. Yeah, or you'll use the other the same ones as the rest of Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so yep. I've got a little bit for you to do it. You can also use basil if you want to do it instead of the um, basil. Basil is super good for clearing the environment. You can smell it if you like it. 
you can use that instead of the pepper beer. You're doing um, this. And what else do you need? Lemon? Lemon. I have tangerine spray. Tangerine? 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 Okay, so you're going to do lime. Really? And my Okay, so you're making your wonderful lemon purifying room spray. This is going to help clear your environment from immune toxins like, you know, viruses, bacteria, anything that's in our way that we don't want to invade our space, but also, like I mentioned, negative energy, great for your environment for cleansing and uplifting, especially if we're talking about the brain. Peppermint and rosemary are really good for the brain. So this is a good one to keep in your uh, office environment, especially if you're doing a lot of computer work. Do you need rosemary? Yes. Yes. And then if you, uh, once you get it made, I want you to spray it like over you. And I gave you a recipe for, this is a, a one ounce bottle and you're using a two. So if, it, if you think you need some more, you can add some more drops. These are pretty strong oils, so I didn't want to, you guys to overdo it. You just have peppermint and rosemary for the brain. You don't need rosemary for the stimulant. Yes, so rosemary is one of our major herbs that we use for opening up circulation in the brain. And then peppermint, super energizing. So this is a really like energizing and clearing spray. Yeah. Uh, already, uh, I have one in play back here. I'll bring it up. <laughs> yeah, when I was in the um, in medical school and I worked in the cadaver lab, um, you know, it's so much toxins. I it was really challenging. So I would put um, in my mask because you would have to wear a mask, of course. Um, and I would put rosemary in my mask to help me remember all the body parts and all of the you know everything you have to remember. Um, and then it also helped me to like tune out all the formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's starting to smell so good in here, right? So good. Yeah. So we were when we were making things yesterday, the cool off spray. My mom is one of our volunteers, and she was like oh this smells so good you know and in the rosemary particularly that's what I can really smell right now mm -hmm. yeah. and so different oils have different ways we smell them like we smell them like it's a base note really solid it's that grounding we have a top note where it's like that uplifting kind of smell so rosemary is giving us that base right now right it's like coming in and oozing around all of our tables and we're like ah oh, yes and so then the lemon then uplifts us and we smell that for like that beginning aroma, poof, and then the rosemary stays there longer. How's that? Does everybody like their blend they made? Okay, so label it, <laughs> write what it is, write what's in it, when the date. Now, um, the labels and uh, Sharpies, just they don't always love their relationship that much. So um, you can put plastic tape, like clear tape is what we did. You'll see like on the... Um, Sanitizer. sanitizer you can just get that clear tape and put it over the top of it that way because you know if you're putting something in it that's oily it's gonna rub off and then you're like well I don't know what that was <laughs> so that's my suggestion um, unless you're you know making a thousand of them or maybe for your friends and you're getting them made you know um, which there are lots of resources to get labels made okay let's move on we're gonna come back to, we're not so I put in here a nasal congestion remedy for you. We're not going to make this one. I put the essential oils. I put lots of stuff in here for you because they're so fun and easy to make. Um, and I wanted to have you give you lots of resources. So this is a nasal nasal congestion remedy, which I know is really needed during this time during COVID. Lots of people have lost their sense of smell and taste or have lost some of it. It's coming back. So this remedy will actually help with that. So also having some rosemary in there is really good too. So lemon, tea tree oil, you could add in the rosemary. So um, this is a great one that you, all you have to do is combine those together, five drops of lemon, five drops of tea tree and put on a paper towel and then place it on your pillow while you're sleeping. Really great for opening up the respiratory pa passages. You could also do the other thing. You could make a spray like we just did. You could make a roll on. So there's lots of different ways. We're gonna talk about how to make the roll on. So, 
Essential oils are great because you can use them in lots of different ways, right? You could just put it in a diffuser in your environment, on your desk. <laughs> so you're looking for something to open up your passages. You know, I like to roll them under my nose. That's a really good one if I'm feeling, you know, I need to breathe and open up because we need so much oxygen, right? And so rosemary, peppermint, eucalyptus, lemon, all those help open up. And tea tree um, is one of the ones I put on your list here as your other, really good for the immune system. You probably have heard of tea tree um, from Australia and New Zealand. It's wonderful antibacterial, antimicrobial. It's used in lots of things now. Used in uh, deodorants and used in toothpaste and you know it's really wonderful for that. Um, it's very strong. I don't know, did I pass that one around? I yes. don't think I, I did. Yeah, I already passed it back. Okay, here's another one and if you, get, if you didn't get to smell the tea tree, make sure you smell it because it's very specific, right? You, I mean, you would know if you overdid it with that oil. And that's the thing where you're starting to blend and learn how to use the oils. You're like, okay, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna make a blend using these three oils. Smell the oils. If you need a break in between, you can use coffee beans as a way to switch so you can, your brain can have the turn on, turn off of the olfactory system. Um, and if there's one you're like, oh, this is really strong. I know that I'm not gonna want a lot of it. Make less drops of that one because you can always add more, but you can't go back, right? So you always wanna, and you can also do, sometimes what I'll do is I'll make the, um, the blend. So you can buy, the even smaller than this, but you can just get the empty bottles like this and you can make some blends. So say like you're gonna make this um, uh, remedy, the one I gave you, the nasal congestion remedy. You can make your blend in the small jar, adjust your drops as needed, and then use this blend to do whatever you want with it, right? You could put it in the diffuser, you could make a roll on, you could make a spray. Mm -hmm. So you could start making your own blends. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I love these, these are great. They're, in, you know, you can buy, this is the, um, I can't remember what size this is off the top of my head, but there's smaller ones too, if you like the smaller ones. <laughs> 15 milliliters. 15, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a really great one. Okay, super. Let's talk about oregano. I love oregano. Would you do me a favor? Can you go get some oregano from the garden? Thank you. Or you can use, here, you wanna take this? Thank you. Um, I don't know if I gave you, did I give you, I think it's up there. Oregano. Yeah, so oregano, oh, wow. very strong, very, very strong, right? Oh, huh? <laughs> yes. So if you're going to use oregano in a blend, of course, you, you want to use a very small amount. You can use oregano oil internally. It's a really great antimicrobial, especially for parasites. Um, and but again, you can the very, very small amount, one drop and blend it like you put it in a fat, like in a, um, like a teaspoon of coconut oil or something, or you can also buy it in, encapsulated. So they'll put the oregano in a capsule that then you'll break down in your gut. So you can do that too. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't, but it is another oil you can take internally. So oregano as an herb is a spice, right? You probably know from Italian cooking and using it in that aroma as an herbal. So a lot of herbs have that culinary um, and herbal or plants have that both. And also with essential oils, you can use oregano as a oil in cooking. Of course, like if you used one drop, it would be a big thing of pasta sauce, right? You wouldn't want to use too much, um, but it's because it's very strong. Um, but it's really great for cold and flu boosting the immune system because it's so antimicrobial and antiviral. Um, and the other ones you could think about, you know, when I like to think about herbs like that are the culinary ones, why did we start using them so long ago? Because we needed to fight off the uh, microbes from a long time ago, we didn't really cook things right. <laughs> you know, we didn't have the same things that we have now. So we used thyme, marjoram, basil, we used clove, cinnamon, orange, all those things to help us to fight off the microbes, the viruses, the bacteria that we were exposed to that we weren't able to fight off back then because we didn't have the same stuff that we have now, right? So um, anyway, we're gonna look at the oregano in a minute, but what was that? I forgot my point. But anyway, we're gonna move on. I'll remember it in a minute. But yeah, so we can it's use, <laughs> right, it's good for you, yes. But you can use uh, herbs for culinary and in an herbal way. Okay, let's talk about, so the botanical name is Ore Oreganum vulgare, and we use the leaf, so she's gonna come back in just a minute, but we, this is the thyme. Thyme is very similar. We use thyme and marjoram and um, oregano are very similar in their antimicrobial and antiviral properties, and we use the leaf and the flower and not the stem um, or the root. And 
It's herbaceous, so when it was going around, you probably smell that, you're like, oh, this is definitely herby, right? You can smell that herbal quality. It's very sharp, very intense. Like, oh, I think David made a face. He's like, oh God, you know, this is, this is intense. Um, and it's very green, it, like smell, you can smell the green quality, right? You're like, this is a plant that I know is gonna work. And then also it's very camphorous. So camphorous means we could use it for um, on a, as a salve, right? On the chest to open up the respiratory system or under the nose or in a diffuser. So, you know, when they had that, what was that, um, that stuff that you used to spread on your chest? Vicks, uh, that's Vicks Vapor Rub. Yeah, so it could be like that in, our, in a nice, healthy way. <laughs> okay, so oregano essential oil is used as a power for cleansing and purifying agent. So you could use it um, as a cleaning product in, a, in your own cleaning blend. I do that, I make my own like cleaning spray and uh, cleaner for the windows, all that kind of stuff, because it's really easy to make and then I know what goes into it. It supports a healthy immune system, healthy digestion, and respiratory function. So we know that when we're using, oh, thank you. Okay, great, we'll pass them around. Oregano. And that, a great one to be using in your uh, culinary kitchen. Mmm, smells so good, right? Um, so oregano can be used if we're talking. We could also use it in the herbal, the herbal realm, um, and we could use it in some of your immune boosting blends. You could use it in a tea. Um, it, you know, sometimes people don't like oregano, like the flavor of it in the tea, but you can use it and then kind of like you know hide it a little bit, right? Um, so that's what you can do for that. Um, it's great antioxidant. So when we use it either as a um, tea or herb, you can make a tincture from it, um, or as an essential oil, it fights off free radicals. So our antioxidants are A, C, E, selenium, and zinc. Those are our supplements. But when we're talking about the herbal world, we have like in the plant world, fruits, right? Most people think like our berries. And the antioxidants help support the cellular membrane. So our cell membrane is made of uh, it's a, um, a phospholipid bilayer. So it has this like fat layer and we want to protect that fat layer on the cells. So when we use an antioxidant, it protects that cell. It's like makes it stronger, right? And so things can't go in and out of the cell that we don't want to. And it fights off all the free radicals, which is all the like junk in our environment that goes into our system that we have to detox. Okay, so you can take one drop of oregano oil in a veggie cap. You can also make your own veggie caps. You can buy them uh, for one of those resources that I mentioned there. You can dry your herb. You can encapsulate it yourself. Or you can put an oil in a, uh, the essential oil, one drop into the veggie cap, close it, and then take it. So you can do it that way too because it bypasses kind of like the the sensitive esophagus and goes into the stomach, right? Because our stomach has our uh, hydrochloric acid. We want to be able to use the stomach to break down stuff. So um, if you want to start making your like your powdered herb, you could take the bone set, you could dry it, you could grind it and make your own capsules. It's super easy to do that. You have little machines. Like, you can buy them, they're inexpensive. But you can also make a tea, but you know, I don't like to take capsules. I like to take the real thing. To me, just as part of the medicine. But some people don't like that part. They like to take capsules. So it just depends. Well, also, uh -huh. Uh huh. Uh, you said a couple of drops in a capsule. One. Or, or one drop in a capsule. Yeah. What if you put it like on a cracker or something? Yeah, yeah, you could Same do you, you could do that. I would I think I would <laughs> or a regular cat tracker, totally. Yeah, no, you could. Um when I'm thinking about taking oils, I think the best way is to do it in fat. So take like a um let's say you took a little bit of coconut oil, I would put it in that and digest it instead of on a food source because you want your uh, layers in, of the skin, like your buccal membrane, to absorb it on the way down. If we have to put it on like a food source, what happens is that our body recognizes it as food and then as a different chemical that it does to break it down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I would use fat because our, then our cells go and they suck it right up. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, great. So there, I put directions on a diffuser, how to use it in your diffuser. One to two drops in the diffuser of your choice. Um, you can do it internally. Again, one drop. Here says four full ounces of liquid. So you would take one drop and put it in a half a cup of water and then drink it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You could put it in a smoothie. You could have an oregano smoothie. Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> 
Just kidding. But you could, you could make like a gazpacho, you know, and you could, because you can use it as a culinary way. So you could like make an immune boosting gazpacho if you wanted to. Okay. Um, and topically, one drop diluted into 10 drops of carrier oil. So I like to use um, organic jojoba oil. And this is the company, I'll write it up here. It's called Hoba Care. Um, and you can buy your oil. This is oregano oil? What is this? This is jojoba oil. This is your carrier, uh, carrier oil. Hoba Care, jojoba. So when we are making a roll-on like we're gonna do next, or say you're gonna make an massage oil, you are gonna put the carrier oil in the container and then add your essential oils to it, okay? So, um, I like to use jojoba oil because it, uh, it's very similar property to the fat cells of our skin and it absorbs really well. Um, I also like the pure quality of it. Olive oil is very adulterated. Almond oil has a lot of sensitivities for people because it's a nut. And so jojoba oil is pretty like right, straight around the board. People don't have a lot of sensitivities. It's really pure, inexpensive, and you can get it organic. So anyway, that's my two cents about jojoba oil. <laughs> okay, so it, lasts it does. It lasts forever. Yeah, I mean, that's you can buy it by the <clears throat> the gallon or less. Amazon has it. Yes, kid. <laughs> well, yes, they probably do. They probably do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So we, um, I, on your next page, I gave a sinus infection remedy. So this is a wonderful one to make if you feel like you have a sinus infection coming on or some people have chronic sinus infections. And so if you have a chronic sinus infection, this is a great one you can start using um, on your pillow when you go to sleep or make a aroma diffuser. <clears throat> and as we're moving into cold and flu season, this is a really good one to bring and have in your first aid kit, right? Start really thinking as you're taking the classes over the next few, um, over the next month or two, is to really making that toolkit, right? Like, what can I make and put in the toolkit so that when I, the time comes, I'm already ready. And, you know, I don't have to think about going to the store and buying something. I just have it right there. So this is a great one. Sinus infection oil, garlic. So put five drops of oregano oil on a paper towel and then place it on your pillow while you sleep. So you can use garlic oil or the oregano oil. I don't really like garlic oil. Make, is, it doesn't come as an essential oil. It comes as like this is the oil. And it's really, you know, you don't want to smell like garlic like all the time. But I did put it on here. Yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah. Keep right. Keep mosquitoes and vampires. You will not have a problem. Beings. Right, and humans. Yeah, I mean, people might not like you that much. So I, I put uh, the oregano on here but and the garlic for you to choose from. Um, but I garlic is so good for your system. It's a really, really good um, for helping circulation, for blood circulation, for uh, hypotension and hypertension. Really good. So anyway, there you go. You got that one. Cool. Okay, let's move on to lavender. Could you go grab some lavender? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. I don't. I forgot to get the the one to this. Oh, yeah. We might. We, we probably have some back there. Okay. Lavender. lavender. So lavender, you probably heard of lavender. It's very really commonly used. Yeah. Um, here's some. Is there some? Do you guys have some? Yeah, I'm Over, okay. I love lavender. Quick. Oh, look at that. Oh, you are. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love it. Thank nice. you. Yeah, so beautiful. Um, pass that around. So I love lavender. It's so so easy to grow. We grow it here at the farm, um, and you can we use the flowers. There are lots of varieties of lavender. You probably have heard that as well, like you know French lavender, Italian. It grows all over different countries. Um, so this is Lavandula angustifolia is the one that essential oil is made from. So you want to make sure that you're reading the containers when you're buying it, and we're getting the right one. So uh, la lavender angustifolia. And we use, like I said, the flower. And it, so how does it smell when it's being passed around? What do you guys think? Wonderful. How, when you, how did it make you feel when you smell Peaceful the lavender? Calming. Peaceful, calming, right? Yeah, it's like immediately, right? Yeah, wake up, no. Um, it immediately promotes or um, 
invigorates, invites is a better word, invites a sense of peace and calming, right? It really allows us to go into this place. And lavender has so many uses. I think that it's claim to fame. It's had the most studies done and evidence-based studies for use for relaxation. But we can also use it from the immune perspective. And that's one thing I love about using different oils and opening up your mind, right? That's what the oils are doing right now. They're opening up your mind to the possibilities of using things in a different way. And lavender is really great for the skin. And what I love about it is you can make it into a formula to help from, you know, with skin wounds or skin healing, burns, like I mentioned. So really great. So it's herbaceous. Again, it's got that herbal quality. It's very floral, very scented. You uh, probably, if you smell lavender, you probably know what it is, right? Most people now, their brain, like, oh yeah, that's lavender. But you can also tell when lavender has been adulterated. Like, like oh, that is lavender? That doesn't smell like lavender, right? So when you start to really tune your senses to the oils that are pure and clear, you'll be able to see, smell the difference as you start to get more sensitive. So. Uses and benefits, you can put a few drops on the bottom of your feet to help with sleep, promoting the sleep and energy one we have in two weeks, that's gonna be a great one when we talk about lots of ways to help promote sleep. And um, you can put it on your pillow before you go to night sleep. You can make an eye pillow. There's so many ways to use lavender. Um, it aids in balancing mood. Really good for anxiety, depression, helping to calm the sympathetic nervous system. Um, helping with nervous tension and anxiety, really huge there. Increases mental activity. So it's interesting that you would think like, well, it's relaxing. How is it gonna you know, increase my mental focus? Well, it's because you can think about when you have so many thoughts going on in your brain at once, because a lot of times if you have anxiety, it's very common. Like think, 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 right? But the lavender, what it does is it comes in and it creates like a pathway for clarity because it lets all those other thoughts kind of like melt away and then you're able to focus on the main one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I love lavender and actually focus ones, which you don't really think about it for that. Um, again, you can use it as a natural perfume um, and relieving skin issues. Really great for wounds, bug bites, insect bites, uh, oily skin. Uh, I had a bunch of poison ivy <laughs> last uh, two weeks ago I went camping and it was all over and I got like all of course it was like I was like I wasn't even touching anything on my stomach but that's where I got it all. So I use the lavender a lot just to help with itching um, but uh, um, it can, re it's really good for itching because it dries, when you use essential oils, you can, you know, when you put it, like make a drop, you can see it like dries it up, right? Because like, yeah, so when you use it for topically, it's really good. And lavender can be used neat, like I mentioned that word neat, where you can just use it topically. You don't need to have a carrier oil. And so if I uh, have something right away, I keep it in my kitchen, in my little like kitchen, you know, cabinet. If I have a burn or I have a scrape or a cut, I can immediately use it in that way. Um, so diffusion, you can use it in a diffuser, three to four drops in a diffuser of your choice. You can dilute one drop in four full ounces of liquid and take it internally, uh, or you can take it in that little gel cap I mentioned. Um, there's lots of supplements now that are adding so pretty, the butterfly. Lots of um, supplement companies are adding lavender into their formulas or even just making a single because the studies are showing how good it is for relaxing the nervous system. Um, you can apply one to two drops to desired areas for relaxation. You know, for at night before bed, again, you could put it on the palms of your hands or the bottom of your feet or the back of your neck, you know, under your nose. Yeah, anything to help stimulate your body to go to sleep. Um, I like to put it like I'll take a shower before bed and then just have it just put a few drops in some uh, lotion and then put on the lotion and that really helps to my body to relax to get into that deep sleep. So you, if you can have possible skin sensitivities with lavender, so just be cautious. I, you know, every once in a while, just someone will <laughs> have a sensitivity. We're all individualized, right? So just make sure you're checking. Again, keep out of uh, use of children. I put a asthma remedy in here. So we're not really focusing on the respiratory system as much, like I'm not doing a respiratory class, but the respiratory system is so big, a huge part of our immune system, right? That's usually where people it goes to, like upper respiratory infection, lower respiratory infection. So I wanted to put the asthma remedy in here because I work a lot with patients with asthma and they're always looking for something that they can try that will help them. So here's a good one. If you know of anyone that has asthma or if you're suffering from it for yourself, 
This is a wonderful one that you can do with eucalyptus and lavender to help open up the passages and to relax the system, right? When we have the asthma, everything gets ex exasperated, right? And we can't breathe, so it helps it relax the system. Okay, now we're gonna move on to ginger. Ginger. Now we're gonna go from relaxation to stimulation. <laughs> Here's a ginger. Do you have, everybody have one that's being passed around? Okay. Um, so ginger, oh, I just love ginger. It smells so different in this form to me when it's really, and I'll pass around. You probably all know what this is, right? Ginger, <laughs> ginger right? And I like to, to bring it to class because I like to, for you to smell the, sorry, you just smell the difference in what it's like in this form, right? It, I mean, it's pretty pure, but it smells different, doesn't it? And there are there are also lots of forms of ginger, but it smells different. It, this is not like concentrated. This is so concentrated, and you can see like this would be in, in, this is intense. <laughs> I love it. That smells more floral. It smells more floral, right? Mm-hmm. It does. It has a different aroma um, and not as spicy. I think like sometimes you think of ginger. Some people don't like ginger because of its spiciness. So ginger, gingerber officinale. It is a wonderful essential oil um, from the fresh rhizome of the ginger plant. And you know, we can grow it here, but it's more tropical, right? But we can, we're trying the turmeric out here. And the things that we can grow here, because we can grow many tropical plants in Asheville, but they don't last the winter, right? So then we're like, well, what do we do?